So this chapter is human populations. This is Brazil. Look, don't you want to go visit? Maybe, maybe not. I've never been there. I, I would love to travel though. Um, so the case study talks about population stabilization in Brazil. You can skip reading through this. We will probably come back to it um, this Friday, because on Friday we're gonna practice some FRQs. So we'll look at the chapter six and chapter seven case studies. It'll help you review what's in both chapters as well. So that'll be a good chance for you to make sure you understand what's going on. Um, but the first section is just about population growth in general. So the idea that um, the human population has grown quite a bit in the past couple of centuries and why, so what things have allowed that population growth. Um, the idea that people are, some people are concerned about overpopulation for humans. Um, so what's the carrying capacity and have we overshot that? Are we um, bound for trouble or are we gonna stabilize fast enough that there won't be um, a, a bunch of problems because of overpopulation? Um, and some people who think that we're gonna be fine argue that things like technology um, and advances in science and just how we um, use resources can help us um, mitigate or overcome the obstacles that come with overcrowding and having more and more people. So all of that to say, this first section introduces the idea of why overpopulation is a concern. So the idea of overpopulation is that um, it causes a couple of things. First, we use too many of the resources that are on the earth. So if there's not enough resources to go around, then people are gonna starve, there will be famine, um, people will run out of clean water, um, people will not have access to things like healthcare, um, people won't have enough room to live. So we talked about the idea that stress and overcrowding can cause some like psychological ramifications. Um, people worry that maybe that will happen with humans if we get too many people in the same area. Bless you. Um, and then also looking at the quality of the environment. So um, if there are too many people and we use resources without thinking about the long-term impact, we might be fine now, but in a hundred years, what will the earth look like? Will there be enough water? Will there be forests? Will there be um, parks or things that people think are important for us today? Will those things still be around for people in the future? So what's that look like? Um, the idea of social justice is um, tied into this because if you think that everyone should have access to health care, then that's something that impacts um, or it changes as, the, as populations get bigger. So if there are more and more people and you have people who are very, very poor who don't have access to health care or clean water or medicine or things like that, then if we control the population, maybe those people could have access to those things. So there's a, a balance between, or a link between population size and social justice. And what does that look like? Um, so a question related to quality of life and maybe technology improving our ability to overcome a carrying capacity that's lower is related to, can we also make sure that people are living uh, a high quality life? So are, are people in developing countries living the same way that people in developed countries are? And you guys probably already know, no, they're not. So there's, there's a difference there. There's some catch up that developing countries have to do if social justice is a concern for um, policymakers, for, for um, people who are teaching, for just people in general. If that's something that matters to you, there's some catch up that has to be done. So um, we've talked about the fact that until recently, the human population has grown very slowly. So there's a few reasons for that that's introduced in this section here. Originally, humans were hunter-gatherers. So not until fairly recently did humans um, learn how to um, grow crops, so developing agriculture, um, and domesticate animals. So we now raise animals specifically for the purpose of um, slaughtering them to eat. So if we weren't doing that, we'd still be hunting and gathering, which would put some limits on our population size. Um, another reason that we've had quicker growth in the recent, quote, recent, okay, because it's like the last 200 years or maybe 400 years um, recently is that we've had developments in um, preventing disease. Um, we've had developments in making sure that everybody gets proper nutrition. So before, disease and poor nutrition were limiting factors, and they're not as much. Because of that, that means that children don't die as often. 
so child mortality rates are lower and that means that once someone actually reaches their adult phase of their life they're going to live longer so that all contributes to population size because more kids are reaching adulthood and having kids there of their own and then adults who become adults are able to also have more kids they're able to be around longer which helps with stability of family size and taking care of like the next generation so all of that affects population size i know fascinating stuff it's very riveting um, this talks about population and doubling time so in general if we look at the entire world the, there are some estimates for how many people were on the earth so if you're looking at this this is in millions um, somewhere between 17 and 1900 we passed a billion people on earth but in the last hundred years we've gone from 1.6 billion to 9.7 billion and that's a big jump Okay. So the increase of the growth rate that we're seeing um, was definitely a J-curve until recently. Now it looks like birth rates are slowing down. So we're starting to go from exponential growth with that J-curve shape back to S-growth, S um, or S-curve, sorry, which is logistic growth. The question that environmentalists are looking at is, are we curving fast enough? Um, is our growth rate slowing fast enough so that we won't um, have a huge dieback so that we won't have a lot of problems caused by overpopulation. So bless you. Um, some other reasons that population was controlled um, or had a slower growth rate are things like war and famine. Um, before we developed ways of kind of negating those effects or overcoming those things, they tended to kill off a lot of people. In the Middle Ages, there were a lot of plagues, so a lot of um, episodes of Black Death that would sweep through um, usually Europe, uh, but a lot of estimates say that uh, up to a third of the people living at the time died because of things like the plague. So we don't have usually huge outbreaks of disease anymore. So that's a big thing that has contributed to um, population growth. We also have more trade, which means people have access to more resources worldwide. So um, because of that, we've developed new technologies in part by exchanging information with other cultures. So we have better agriculture, we have cleaner sources of power, rather than everybody burning coal, which, as you know, releases a lot of pollutants, so that could affect quality of life and affect people's life expectancy. Um, we have cleaner power, we have better health care, we have better sanitation. People don't just usually pee in the street, which is something that is a problem in some major cities. Um, my sister-in-law and brother went to France recently, um, and they, there are public urinals that are literally in the middle of the street because people were just peeing in the middle of the street because there were no bathrooms to use, there were no public bathrooms. So as far as ladies, I have no idea what we're supposed to do if we go to visit France because peeing in a urinal for us is kind of a no-go, but as a guy, you can literally walk up to this urinal and just pee in the, the street. So. But sanitation, hygiene, is something that relates to population, right? And what do you say? And I think there might be like like blinders on the side, so not like you'd have to be like trying the book. And that don't don't do that. Don't be that person. Just don't do it. Okay. Um, so that's what this section kind of talks about. Um, will we reach equilibrium? Will we reach that carrying capacity and have the the S curve of population growth slow fast enough? I don't know. Okay. Um, next question, and this kind of contrasts a couple of different viewpoints. So there's Malthus's view and there's Marx's view. As far as I know, you don't necessarily have to know these by name, but it won't hurt because um, it might also just help you fix um, the facts in your head a little bit more. Also, if you know anything about governments or you've taken a class where you've heard Malthus before um, or about Marxism, okay, this might help give you some context. So these things might make sense. Um, but the question that this section asks, asks is, does population growth cause poverty or does poverty cause growth? So where, where is excess population involved? Um, is excess population a problem that causes pollution and overcrowding and unemployment? So it causes poverty because you have too many people, so you don't have access to good education and good opportunities, so therefore people are poor and then we get things like starvation and disease. Or um, does exploitation of a group of people 
so uh, oppressing people and trying to um, control them lead to poverty and because of that poverty then people have large families because if you are a person in poverty you're more likely to have children who don't survive so that means you have more kids so hopefully you have kids who survive to be adults that's that's one of the correlations that we see okay so does exploitation and poverty cause excess population or is excess population something that causes poverty interesting question it, it's 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 interesting because you can think of scenarios or people researchers and scientists can think of scenarios where both fit realistically so the book says that it's probably a combination of both of those things so then there's two different things or two different approaches that we need to take to looking at curbing population growth um, and then fixing quote unquote fixing the poverty problem so we can lower birth rates so lower the number of kids that people have um, and we can try to reduce pro poverty. So things that actively encourage people to plan their family, um, things that actively uh, help people get access to more ed education and better health care and more opportunities. So there are countries that have focused on either one or the other, and there have been big differences seen in, in both of those different types of countries. The book gives an example of each one. So the um, example of lower birth rates is here. The example of trying to do is reduce poverty is up here. Um, but that, that two-pronged approach, looking at both of those, would help with um, maintaining a high quality in the environment and resource consumption. When we're looking at resource, resource consumption in the US, we're a developed country. We use more resources per person than a developing country with a high birth rate. So Bangladesh is about the size of the state of Iowa. They have, I think the book says it's 160 million people. So they're fairly overcrowded. They still have a high birth rate, so the population is still growing, um, but they use fewer resources. So maybe rather than looking at, for developed countries, trying to th lower birth rates or reducing poverty, we should be looking at making sure people use less resources. So we should be limiting how much we use because if everybody lived like people in America did, um, we'd need at least four Earths. Some estimates say we need more like 10 Earths in order to survive and maintain our lifestyles. That's, that's not possible, okay? So there's, there's some serious stuff to think about there. So we've got a few different perspectives here. One is that technology is beneficial. So these are people who subscribe to this would be technological optimists. So the idea that by innovating and by creating new things and advancing science and medicine, um, we can increase our carrying capacity. Based on Malthus, that was the first view that I talked about on the last page, um, he thought that there was gonna be overpopulation and starvation like 100 years after, maybe 50 years after when he was proposing things. We're now 200 years past that. We're well over where he thought the population would be and we're fine at the moment because we've had so many medical and scientific breakthroughs and advances. So technology can be helpful. Um, however, um, some uh, using technology and increasing technology also increases the impact that we have. So how we affect the environment. So this particular section here, and there's a figure underneath my post-it note that explains that um, impact, so the amount that we affect the environment, Good morning. Today is Tuesday, January. 15th. I'm just going to let it run because I don't want to load too videos. First social so here are announcements. They're great. And you need to see Mr. Smith in order to use the materials. All girls interested in playing soccer next fall. Conditioning will begin oh. today. Right after school until 5:30. We'll be okay, I guess I'll pause the video and we'll and talk again later. But this, this, English this thing, I equals PAT. Tuesdays from four to five in Hollinger, two forty-eight. Wednesday, January 16th, is the last day to drop or add, add a class that receives an F. If you drop or add a class after tomorrow, P is, school, I don't remember what P is. Population, A is affluency, T is technology. Conditioning for boys and girls.